Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, episode number 489, Human Growth Hormone and Secretagogues and Why They Matter. BioBalance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. Today we're going to be talking about one of the most important hormones that human beings make, which the United States government has decided is problematic. Uh, and assumptively, they've decided it's problematic because their interpretation of abuse, that people abuse these hormones in ways that are detrimental to their health, and they, they and their doctors can't be allowed to make these decisions based on but their evidence. We have lots of drugs that are abused by our our uh, population. Yeah, and they don't prevent doctors from writing those drugs. I mean, there's the op- <sighs> opioid crisis. Right. You can take anything and abuse it. You can take water and abuse it. You can make yourself ill by drinking water and drinking it and drinking it and drinking it. You can end up in the hospital. So if they, they say that Orson Welles died from drinking too much coffee, he washed out all of his electrolytes and his body shut down. And he died. That's so I mean, excess in any area. Excess, yes. Is but but it's also a personal decision. I mean, we live in America. We're free, right? So we should be able to make our own decisions well, and not be limited. You are, according to the government, you are allowed to make your own decision within the range of things they are allowed to make you make your decisions in. And they if you're not going to hurt yourself or somebody else, then I, you should be able to make that decision. I think that's a that's solid how I argument. brought up Rachel, my daughter's. An adult now, but when she was little, the only thing I would stop her from doing is something that she would hurt herself or somebody else. So that was the limitation, and that's kind of what I expect from my government. Well, good luck with that. Thanks. And I know you're I know. fighting that battle, and I hope that you win it. Uh, what we're talking about is that the federal government restricts a doctor's ability to prescribe human growth hormone if they prescribe it for what they think are legitimate medical reasons, health reasons for a patient that is in need. And, and there are all kinds of cases that can be made for that, from, from severe brain trauma. Uh, your body needs to make human growth hormone in order to repair itself. We talk about homeostasis, the balance, the, the shifts and changes and flux in our systems as we age, day-to-day life, break down internally part of our systems, and our body tries to rebuild it to restore the balance that we need to have to be healthy. Human growth hormone is one of the, cre- uh, one of the essential balancing effects that we have and the government restricts our access to it because they think people abuse it. They think doctors, athletes, whomever abuse it. And that the best way to prevent that abuse from happening is to make it not available. available. And so doctors who try to write these prescriptions pretty regularly have their licenses challenged and removed by the federal government for doing something wrong. And it's a, it's a debatable argument. It goes to court cases and so on. But so far, the system keeps saying the government has the authority to make that decision. You don't really have the authority to go against it. You can challenge it. But if you go against it, you're breaking the law. So, so let me just go backwards a little bit. What does growth hormone do? It's, it's made in your pituitary gland. It's stimulated by your hypothalamus, which is in your brain. It, and when you're young and, you're, uh, and your bones aren't, um, aren't, sealed yet. It makes you grow. When you're older, it heals you. It builds tissue. It keeps your brain, as, as Brett was saying, in this homeostasis balance. When we're adults, we make as much tissue as we destroy every day. Every bit of every, your muscle's not the same today as it was yesterday. It grew and it was broken down. So when we're in this state of health, when we're young and healthy, when we're less than 40 or less than 50, depending on our sex, We are balanced, growth and breakdown. So then testosterone and growth hormone drop. And they drop usually before we're 40, but it becomes critical at 40. And then all of a sudden we 
don't make as much, we don't heal as much, we get sick, all, we lose muscle mass, it's hard to build muscle mass, it takes more effort, our brain shrinks. All of these things are regulated by growth hormone. So growth hormone starts dropping and we start, I call it shrinking. Yeah. yeah, we are not healing as well. I, if we have a head injury, our brain doesn't heal as well. So growth hormone is essential for healing. It's also essential for keeping us lean. And if you look at America, we're not lean. And as we get older, people get fatter. And that's part of the deal. You, you replace your muscle with fat if you don't have enough growth hormone. Well, you, you were sharing with me that you had recently had uh, some patients that came to your office. They had read your book in a Scandinavian country mm-hmm. and were fascinated by it. And so they flew to your offices here in St. Louis mm-hmm. for treatment because they can't get this at home. Mm-hmm. And that while they were here, they were sharing with you how, how shocking it is for them to see how much obesity there is in America. And right. we've been talking about the fact that it's an epidemic, that diabetes mm-hmm. and, uh, is an epidemic, obesity is an epidemic, heart diseases, all related to these issues, mm-hmm. one of which is whether or not we're making enough testosterone and, and growth, growth hormone, hormone to restabilize our systems internally. Mm-hmm. So it's the, the net effect or loss of that is additive. As we get older and as we have fewer of these hormones, then our mm-hmm. body doesn't repair itself. The illnesses that we get, the diseases that we're susceptible to increase in severity, and eventually something kills us. Right. So, and, and we're, But before we're killed, you know, my dad used to say, oh, yeah, I'll just die and it'll all be fine. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's not what that's happens. not what happens. You get tortured for years and years and years where you can't walk or you're in a wheelchair or you can't think or, or you can't take care of yourself. To me, that would be torture. Yeah. And it is. Yeah. And, and we allow this because we won't replace the hormones people need and we won't help people be healthier. And also... We're told to eat the wrong things by the powers that be. Right. Too much carb, not enough protein. So in any case, we're being led down the garden path to sickness. I don't know why that is. I don't know why uh, a benevolent government would want us to be like that. But be- Because there's a vested interest that's maintaining market control, economic market control over there are vested interests, multiple, mm-hmm. contrain, contro- control over our healthcare systems. And what mm-hmm. we're allowed to take, what's allowed to be put on the market, what's allowed to be sold, mm-hmm. what's licensed by the FDA. All of these restrictions in service of, quote, good health, uh, care for the American people, also have a strong market sustainability component. So the powers that be are in the sway mm-hmm. of the established interests. And somebody new comes along with something new that says, well, we don't need to spend all that money over there. Let's spend it over here and mm-hmm. get better results. Mm-hmm. And they all go, oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. We're, yeah, we're, we're going to make we're, money on this. Yeah, we're happy where we are. So, But let's talk about okay. the the workaround. Once once the government pretty consistently said, you're not going to be able to use human growth hormone. And there are some drawbacks to taking growth hormone uh, that would that risk some diabetes concerned. and some other things that if it's not done properly – it can actually cause problems, but there's a lot of side effects to a lot of medicines that are still out there. Right. However, I prefer a, a secretagogue, which is a it's a protein or a piece of a protein called a peptide that actually stimulates your own production of growth hormone by stimulating your pituitary to make growth hormone. That way, your own checks and balances in your system work, so you can't really get too much. You it, and and it really really makes you just feel like you used to feel. So a secretagogue is a peptide mm-hmm. and it's they're, they're made by compounding pharmacies mm-hmm. and they're, they're either injections or tablets. Mm-hmm. And what they do, the, the net effect of what they do mm-hmm. is they stimulate your own growth hormone production system to reestablish itself, to re-energize itself. You, you've lost some and that helps you get some of that back, mm-hmm. not all of it. But then that helps your body naturally do what it was doing before mm-hmm. you lost your testosterone and your human growth hormone. So if you have osteoporosis, it makes your it makes your bones grow. If you have what we call sarcopenia, where you've lost your muscles, you're working out, you still can't make muscle, both testosterone and growth hormone work together to build your muscles back. But if you don't have those two hormones, you're never going to get those muscles back. So that's why people get a little tiny and old and, mm-hmm. and can't, can't hold themselves up and can't so walk. So in doing your research for this podcast, you identified <clears throat> a list of 
patients who for whom this is a concern. Mm-hmm. That the patient and their doctor should be aware of these issues and discuss these issues to see is there some benefit from taking a secretagogue or a peptide mm-hmm. or even from trying to take human growth hormone, knowing that the risks there are for the doctor more than they are for the patient. That's right. Uh, so who needs this, these medications? <laughs> Aging patients Excuse with me. the loss of Obviously. muscle and bone. Mm-hmm. So as you get old, it's typical that you lose muscle strength and mm-hmm. you lose bone density, mass. Mm-hmm. mass, and that makes you more eligible for falling and breaking something. Mm-hmm. It makes your body more inflamed, mm-hmm. which exacerbates all of the illnesses that you get as you age. It causes that where your back, back just kind of spinal stenosis, where your back just kind of crunches down on all the nerves and you're in chronic, terrible, yeah. pain. excruciating pain. Yeah. Uh, people suffering from dementia and Alzheimer's. Right. Uh, that, that That's a, it's a... If you look at a patient with Alzheimer's and you uh, just on an x-ray, their brain is shrunk. Well, that's too much breakdown, not enough build back up. I went to a funeral of a good friend this week who was late 80s. And her husband is 90 and he has dementia. We don't even know right now if he understands that she is gone. But I was chatting with him and another friend telling them stories from our history together. And he looked at me and said, I don't remember that. And I smiled and said, it's okay. I will remember it for both of us. Mm -hmm. But someone with dementia loses contact with their past and their connections and their life. As human beings, that's really what makes us human is our memories. Exactly. And and so if something like a secretagogue or a peptide can help me avoid that, I want it. I want Mm -hmm. access to it because I don't want to be like my friend is and and lose my connection with the people that are that populate my life mm-hmm. and not know them. And his, really? daughter, his daughter came over to me and she said, did he know who you were? Mm-hmm. And I've known him mm-hmm. for 40 years. Mm-hmm. And I said, he fakes it so well that I don't know, yeah. but I don't think so. Yeah. You know, it's because yeah. they, they learn little tricks. My mother-in-law so. had that as well. And I looked at her MRI and it was scary. Yeah. It was just awful. I mean, that is, that's kind of, it's not a cell. We're not talking about the cellular activity, although there is cellular activity that builds up the tissues, but, right. but this is just the gross, obvious shrinkage yeah. of, of your, um, your thymus, your immune system, your brain. I mean, your heart doesn't pump as well if you don't have growth hormone. I mean, many of these things can be prevented if we would just yeah. use the right medication and try to be preventive in our activities. But other people who need this are people with diabetes. Mm-hmm. It helps you burn um, fat and make muscle. So that's good for diabetes. It decreases blood sugar. Um, I've actually written a secretagogue for a person who has a patient of mine who's, who's halfway better on testosterone. Mm-hmm. And he, he has an undiagnosed um, muscular uh, degenerative disease. So the muscles in his shoulders and his hips have degenerated. They biopsy that they don't know what it is. They can't say they can't treat it because they don't know what caused it. You know, like so, muscular atrophy. Yeah, yeah, it's atrophy. So he has he can't he's not even fifty and he can't get out of a chair. Yeah, he uses a cane before testosterone. He used a walker, but now he's gained some of that muscle back with testosterone because testosterone to some extent stimulates growth hormone and so, stimulates. So you still maintain that. The testosterone is the first step. Right. The first step before you do anything with growth hormone is to replace testosterone because testosterone in both sexes stimulates growth hormone. Yeah. And it it will do that for a certain period of time, sometimes forever for most people, but sometimes it doesn't get you where you want to go. Or after you've been on testosterone for 15 years, you need the growth hormone isn't, isn't still there. We test for it. So this gentleman takes a secretagogue, one month of a secretagogue, and he's walking better, and he feels better, and he wants more. He called for a refill yesterday, yeah. and he said, this is really working. I'm starting to be able to move around. And, and this is not somebody who's sedentary. Naturally, he has a job. He has, he has to move around. It's so difficult and slow for him to move. I can't imagine how hard that is. So this fixed him. So there's another category of potential patients mm-hmm. for this who suffer from what's called TBI, traumatic brain injury. Mm-hmm. And we know Dr. Mark Gordon out mm-hmm. in California who does a lot of work for the Defense Department mm-hmm. on soldiers who've had mm-hmm. traumatic brain injuries mm-hmm. uh, and, and professional athletes who have right. had a lifetime, especially football players, mm-hmm. of, of traumatic brain injuries. Mm-hmm. But even if you've been in a car accident or you've been hit over the head and robbed, um, 
brain damage is well nigh irreparable. Mm -hmm. And to the degree that your brain can reestablish itself, mm -hmm. it needs something like human growth hormone or secretagogue mm -hmm. to help it do that. Right. It also, and, and when you it. have a brain injury, mm -hmm. it can be, especially if you, we have a lot, there's more frontal injuries than I believe than any other kind where it hits you right here. Well, your pituitary is right here. Underneath your eye. Right. Yeah. Right but between your eyes, right about the same level as the back of your eye. Yeah. That usually gets damaged and then you don't make growth hormone. Right. And I've had three head injuries. I first tested my growth hormone when I was 40 and it was half of what it should have been at any age. Mm -hmm. And it's never, testosterone made me better, but by adding uh, a secretagogue, I finally got it to normal. Yeah. And that's the kind of thing that, and I, I think better, I sleep better, I, you know, that all of those things come along with it. But head injuries are really hard to treat, and some people don't ever get better. And we see a lot, and Mark sees a lot of um, uh, vets who come back from right. from overseas with well, and he's injuries. concerned about the impact on depression and suicide right. from the brain damage. Right. Uh, and and he does just, he does great work with that. Yeah. So um, in when that that is huge. If that ha hits your family, if you have a member of your family with a brain injury, and then you're told, well, there's nothing we can do, and their growth hormones low, well, and, and their testosterone's low often. You, but he was the first one that I heard mention the term secretagogue, right? Because he was talking about the need to find a workaround to treat these brain injured soldiers. Mm -hmm. When the government wouldn't let him use human growth hormone. Right. That's right. And, and, and so he said, we had to find something else. We've found these peptides, and we're using these. And so what so, happened so this week? So now what's happening? What happened this week yeah. that brought us to really uh, focus on this was that the government just out of the blue said, okay, you can't make CJC, which is a peptide that stimulates growth hormone production. You can't make it anymore in your, in your compounding pharmacies. They just, that's it. There was no discussion. There was no, I, I didn't get anything from the FDA that said, we're looking at this. There's a right. problem. And as far as I know, there's no problem with that drug. Right. There's no side effects. But somebody got this, the federal government to issue a ban on the production of CJC 1250 mm -hmm. as of April the 1st. Right. And there's nothing we can do about it. It's just, that's, it's, it's like, you know, the, the king hands down the, the, the paper that says, off with your head. I mean, that's what it feels like to me. So, so I'm a doctor. I should be able to write whatever I want to write for a patient who needs it. I agree with you. I mean, that's why we're trained. Otherwise, but, we're just computers. But what you're reduced to now because of these kinds of administrative decisions that are just government fiat. And I'm waiting for the next one. You're waiting for the next one. There are over a thousand peptides that have been identified. Mm -hmm. We don't know what all of them do in terms of their impact. But they all are natural to us. But they're all natural to and us. And they Our all body communicate something different. Yes. And so now if you take away CJC 1250, then you're looking for some other peptide that might generate similar results. And you'll mm -hmm. move to that, you being the medical community mm -hmm. doctors who do this. Mm -hmm. And then if the government says, oh, you move to XYZ, well, we'll ban XYZ. So then you have to move That's to what I'm ABC. Waiting. That's yeah, what I'm waiting for. And there's only a limited number of these that, tag. that you can actually use yeah. to actually stimulate growth hormone. Yeah. So, but I, I, still don't, I still don't accept the mission. I think that there's something else behind this in terms of why they don't want us to have growth hormone. Maybe we'll live too long. Maybe we'll exceed Medicare. Social Maybe we'll engineering. Ex well, yeah, social yeah. engineering. Yeah. I mean, it does seem like that. Yeah. The things that prevent our disability and death actually are the things that they try to ban or keep from us. So I read a study this morning. I sent you a copy of it. I'm sure you haven't gotten it yet. But it said that they've, they've actually studied the number of uh, cardiac surgeries that are done just before 80 and just after 80. Mm -hmm. 80 is the specific mm -hmm. marker. Mm -hmm. And if you're over 80, they are less likely to do that intervention for you. Mm -hmm. And you very frequently you'll die within a month or two of, of a heart attack. Mm -hmm. But if you're under 80, then they'll still do it. And they say there's no other date, like 76 and 77, the transition. Mm -hmm. between, there's no other date that shows similar data, but that the medical community somehow seems to have decided it's a fake that number. over 80, it, it, yes. It's a fake number. because I mean, my dad's bypass was when he was 90. Yeah. 
I mean, so they well, still, they still did do it. them. They, they still do them, but mm-hmm. they said you are more likely not to get one, not to even have the doctor discuss it with you if you're over 80. Right. I think part of that has to do with your, your risk of death goes up Yeah. on the table, and no doctor yeah. wants their patient to die on the table. Sure. That's one of the things. But, but well, I'm the sure 80, there are many 80 things, is, a, but is kind of a fake number. I mean, there's no of real what you've been learning information. as an anti-aging physician about how to stabilize our body's deterioration and make us stronger as we age. And productive, not just sitting yeah. around playing golf or whatever, but productive <laughs> to society using our yeah. brains. Yeah. I mean, that there shouldn't be a limit on using the, the knowledge of a generation that has lived through a world war or lived through Vietnam or lived through um, all of these different, I mean, there's a lot of learning to be had from having lived through things like this. And so, that benefits society. So we're trying to get people to stay healthy longer by using the things we know physiologically go away and replace them. And that's that seems like a, a no-brainer to me. So your research identified uh, over 2,000 studies mm-hmm. that have been done worldwide mm-hmm. on human growth hormone. Mm-hmm. And the collective benefit results from using human growth hormone that, that have been found around the world, not just in the United States where it's banned. but Yeah, other we're not places. the only people that do research, by the way. Yeah. These studies suggest a wide range of effects when HGH is replaced in aging patients. Number one, reduced body fat. And we talk about the mm-hmm. obesity epidemic and mm-hmm. concerns about being overweight. Mm-hmm. Uh, number two, increased muscle mass. As you age, you replace your testosterone. If you also have some HGH, or secreted that mm-hmm. stimulate your own even, mm-hmm. not not an externally produced one. Uh, you get better bu- muscle mass. You can have a normal muscle mass. Higher energy levels, enhanced sexual performance, regrowth of vital organs. Now, what do you mean by that? What does that research show? <laughs> That's There's regrowth of your brain. Okay. That's a vital organ. That's a vital organ. Some there's, of us don't use it, but... But a lot of things, um, your pancreas... Doesn't work as well. Doesn't doesn't replace its cells as well. Your liver doesn't work as well. Doesn't replace its cells. Yeah. Same with uh, kidneys. Um, your thymus, which is your immune system, it's right behind your your breastbone. That shrinks when you get growth hormone or or testosterone or both. That expands and grows and gives you better T cells to kill cancers and yeah. and uh, viruses and bacteria. So it helps regrow those yeah. at, instead of having it. More breakdown than growth. Right. You have an, you so have more growth than breakdown. Life damages, like you mentioned, liver. Life mm-hmm. damages the, the way we live our lives, and it mm-hmm. can be our personal choices, of what mm-hmm. we've eaten, what we've drunk, whatever. Mm-hmm. It can be toxicity in the environment. It can be stress. It can be a combination of all of those. Mm-hmm. Yes, it can. But the proper balance of secretagogue, stimulating my own human growth hormone mm-hmm. production, or human growth hormone that'll replace it, just like testosterone mm-hmm. replaces can help my liver reconstitute itself and make me mm-hmm. healthier if I'm having that issue. If you're or not trying organs. to continually kill your liver with alcohol or something. Right. Then, yeah, you have to change yeah, your behavior too. You have too. to change your behaviors. And in changing your lifestyle, this week, New England Journal of Medicine came out and said, you can gain 10 years to your lifespan. They didn't say how healthy you'd be during right. that. If you change your, your lifestyle around 50, around halfway through your life, 50. Wow. 10 years. Yeah. That's amazing. I just want they didn't say it was 10 years of productivity and being able to think and move. Yeah. You know, but they did say you can get 10 more years. Just just quickly, let me run through some of yes. these other things. Uh, we talked about regrowth of vital organs, stronger bones, lower cholesterol, lower blood pressure, faster wound healing, uh, regrowth of hair, elevated move, sharper vision, uh, improved cognition. All of those things have been demonstrated in the research as mm-hmm. benefits from replacing human growth hormone or from using secretagogues to stimulate your own naturally produced human growth hormone as you age. And that's a lot. So our concern is that the research seems to be saying this is a viable, valid treatment that should be available. The government is saying, no, you can't use it. And we're going to restrict more and more access to the things that, that might be an alternative. And we don't know why. So we try to present this information to you so that you can be aware of it and that you can talk to your physician about it and that together, all of us maybe, be able to change the system to allow us to use these things that could help us. So as always, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. 
For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.